Hi, I'm Brenda Kazire, and this is my colleague, Nancy Hireman. We are friends, colleagues, and business partners. And we're two hospice nurses, and we are with Odonata Care. We're going to talk with you today about how to manage your medications. So, we're asking a lot of people in the home to manage medications. Um, we're giving medications for comfort, uh, and to prevent symptoms, to treat symptoms, and it can be very overwhelming. And the goal is, to support you, give you the tools to be able to administer and take medications without fear and have some confidence in that. And there's a few ways that we start up with that. And of course, when you come on to uh, care, and in our case, hospice care, we know that many people are already on a number of scheduled medications that they've been on for many, many years, perhaps. So we're gonna talk about how to make this as simple as possible. And the first thing we like to do is make sure that you have an area that is set up where you can really manage your medications so that they're in sight, there's enough space, it's clear to everyone that this is the place where medications are going to be managed. So as you can see, what we did is we set up um, a place on our kitchen counter. Oftentimes it's a really good place for a central location for everyone in the family or whoever is actually managing medications. And at that, wherever you choose, make sure that it's out of reach of children and pets. Absolutely. We really want this to be a safe, of course, safe management. So generally, uh, we want to make it as easy as possible. Opening a bottle three times a day, or six of them three times a day, takes a lot of time, effort. Did I take it at noon? I can't quite remember. So what we want to do is really set this up so that it's really convenient. You don't have to think about it, and it's really going to help your team know when to refill medications too. So we really like to set up all those routine medicines at a week at a time if possible. Now this is an example of one of the Medi sets that you can buy over the counter. They're very inexpensive, and oftentimes your care team will bring one to you. This one has seven days of the week, and it actually has four slots. You may not need all four slots, but this is what we're going to demonstrate. So generally what you would do is put into your box, if you were taking something twice a day, morning and bedtime, you just choose the right slots for each individual medication so that all you have to do is go to that time frame. oh, it's morning, here's my morning meds, they pop out, they're already there, you don't have to open any other bottles. Now what we like to do to help you organize that and to always stay ahead of your routine medications making sure that you have them in the house at least a week ahead. We love to have a list of everything you take regularly, and this really helps everyone in the household know what those medications are. They may not really recognize them by the color and the shape, so on this little form, you would also, at the same time at the beginning, when you're first starting to whoops, excuse me, use this, you would fill out the name of the medicine, what the dose is, and then put a little check mark at the time of day that you take it. So that once a week, whether you, your family member, your hospice team, another caregiver, fills your Medi set, they just pull up the form and they fill it according to this. Of course, if you change it, you change the form. So everybody's on the same page all the time. And you that's, can just draw a line through the old and write a new line. Exactly. And you can use the back too. So what we like to do, again, is to set things up so everything is really in one place. As you can see, we have quite a few medicines. And this is our box of all the medications that are taken on a routine basis, meaning you know you take your heart medicine every day, every day of the week. And it's in here. So these are all the medicines that you take all the time. They're scheduled. Now Brenda is going to talk with you about medicines that you take only once in a while. That's called the PRN medicines or the as-needed medicines. And just for you, do, some people ask, what is PRN? It's abbreviation for a Latin term meaning as-needed. Um, and also in here, the long-acting or the routine, we often have long-acting pain medicines or routine pain medicines. Or, any, or not just pain medicines, but medicines that prevent symptoms from happening. And by taking those routinely, we help prevent symptoms. We use our as-needed medications if we have breakthrough symptoms of, of all kinds. It could be bowels, shortness of breath, anxiety, breathing. There's a lot of reasons we would use breakthrough medication. And breakthrough medications generally work quickly uh, in the moment when you need them. And there's a, they come in a lot of different um, 
forms. We often have liquids and we, then we have um, pills. And sometimes we're not, when we get to the point, we often aren't able to take pills and we have to crush them and give them as a small amount of liquid and turn them into a concentrated liquid. Uh, I'm gonna start with um, pre-filling medications. Uh, having these pre-filled ahead of time is uh, very uh, convenient and you don't hesitate as much if it's there and you can grab your medication, take it, and put the empty one back. Sometimes if we have a patient or a client who has trouble even getting to, say, their kitchen to grab one of those, we might even put a cup at the bedside or at their table next to where they sit during the day so that they can actually take their medication when they need it rather than have to call someone and say, will you bring me something? Yes. And also, it gives a sense of control when they're in control of that as-needed medication while they're able to be in control of that. Uh, you'll see on here, you want to identify this clearly, what the medication is, what the dose is, and what it's for. I'm going to bring it up just so you can make sure you can see that. Yeah. And then what's that one for over there? So they're, they're just two different, because sometimes you may have two different types of liquid medications. Sometimes you may have some liquid medication with a pill crushed in it, as long as they're separated and organized. And that's why we set up this site. So I'm going to demonstrate how we, when you need to give a medication, then they're not able to swallow, how to, how to turn it into liquid. There's a lot of right ways to do this. I'll show you one way and Nancy will show you another. I like to use two spoons. I can take some water and I can use, I'm just gonna use like a half a syringe of water. Hospices generally provide these little syringes for you. And just um, let, while she's getting ready, this syringe, you know, it looks like a syringe and everybody thinks, wow, that's a lot of fluid. But many of the syringes or the amount of fluid we use is so small. This is actually hold, holds only at its maximum one milliliter. How much is one milliliter? They're actually one milliliter is only a fifth of a teaspoon. So you'd have to do five of those just to get to a teaspoon. So that really tells you how safe this is, even if someone's having some trouble swallowing. So, and we can see we're using a half. I can either use water, juice, I, I, it can just a liquid. We can also use one of our concentrated medications so that we can use it to dissolve the medication because oftentimes two medications are needed together at once and that way there's less fluid and it's two birds, one stone. I'm not sure that I, did I get in the way? Did you, they actually see I'm gonna show you, that again. Okay. So I take that? the pill and I crush it between two spoons. And this is a great example. That's what happens in homes. We're busy, a lot is going on. That's why we need this area. So I crush it, I make it into a powder, leave the spoon there. I take my liquid, whether it's a liquid concentrated medication or whether it's water. I then squirt the water on to the powder and I just swirl it around. And this is where you gotta be patient, okay? Just swirl it around. And if you just keep pressing and poking, it turns into a liquid. And again, there's a lot of right ways to this. Some people like pill crushers. I like the spoon because it just keeps it in a little small space. Once I have it into a liquid and all towards the center, I'm gonna pull the liquid up into the syringe, kind of swirling it around. Now I have my liquid. The, the pill has been turned into a liquid with water or with the concentration. And then I have, and I can always have those ready or I can give it in the moment. I then just take a paper towel and I'm ready to go for the next one. So thanks for that interruption, sorry, but that's just like real life. Something happens that's exactly and you right. get interrupted. So I'm gonna show you a different way, very similar. It's gonna be giving the same medication that Brenda just drew up, but I'm gonna show you a different way. And uh, this is, you know, you do whatever is right for you. So first of all, I'm gonna take my syringe and I'm gonna pull it apart. So the plunger is over here, the holder is there. I'm gonna take my pill, my same kind of pill that she did, and I'm gonna break it into small pieces. They're very, very tiny and they break easily. And as you can see, I'm just breaking it and dropping it directly into the syringe. Now I'm gonna push my syringe back, or the plunger back in, and you may not be able to see this, but it takes up 0.1 space in the syringe. 
So now I can do one of two things, just like Brenda said, I can draw up water or I could actually draw up that liquid medication. Say I was gonna draw up a liquid medication, I would have to be much more accurate. So if I was going to draw 0.5 of the liquid medication, I'd have to add in the 0.1, so I'd have to pull it up to 0.6. In this, this uh, uh, demonstration, I'm just gonna use water though. So I'm gonna reach over and do exactly what she did, bring up some water into the syringe. Now that pill, is actually in the syringe already. Now, this is better to use if you have a little time ahead, a uh, few minutes ahead of time. You just kind of roll it around, give it about five minutes. It's already started, you can't even tell yet over from probably the camera, but it's already made a slurry. So here it is, all ready to go. It was in the syringe and it's ready to go. So there's a second way to manage uh, putting your pill into a liquid. Okay. What other questions would we have? Let's see. Well, something else that comes up is how to actually give the medications when somebody isn't swallowing. And um, at this point, they're usually in bed and they need some help. And um, what I always do is, uh, however they're positioned, first of all, have them positioned for comfort. And you can see a video on that. And um, having their head to one side generally helps. I always tell them what I'm doing. Even if they're completely not awake, I let them know what I'm doing. And I always start by just touching their lip with the medication. And then I roll it in to the lip in between the cheek and gum. And I just drizzle it along the cheek and gum to the high, high side. And you just kind of do this. And even if they're not swallowing, this tiny bit of medication will go down and be effective. Generally, I think most people hear that they need to put those liquid medications always under the tongue. And actually, you will hear that, but as you could see, Brenda said, actually get it back as far towards the back of the jaw as you can. And you know, it is a reflex in us humans. If somebody puts something in our mouth and we have been asleep, to close our lips. It's just a reflex. So if that happens, don't worry about it and you, the teeth are really tight and you can't get between the teeth, you don't have to worry about it. That's as Brenda said, all you can do is just reach and move that cheek out a little bit and go right on the outside of the teeth, again, all the way to the back and gently insert it back there. And even when giving medications with people who can swallow and are awake, some of them are kind of bitter and they don't like the taste. And the farther you put it back in your mouth, there's less taste buds and they taste it much less. And then just follow it with some water or whatever beverage. Great, and now one last thing that's really important to us nurses, and it will be for you too, to control how well you feel, and that is how do you document these medicines? First of all, if you're taking something regularly, your health team is going to know. You don't need to write these down unless it helps you, that's fine. You don't need to write down anything that's regular or scheduled, we will know that. But if you have something that you're using, as Brenda was showing, every once in a while, you only use that extra medicine for pain or shortness of breath or nausea or even constipation, and you only use it once a day, once a week, your team will want to know that so they can help to guide you towards what to schedule to keep ahead of your symptoms. So in that case, we have some documentation forms that we could suggest for you. Um, and also, we, we take that information, and if you're using a certain amount of as-needed medication, we know how to adjust these longer-acting medications, and that's why that information is really important. Um, we have a form here, that, and, and whatever form works for you, as long as you can get it written down somewhere, um, but it shows uh, the date and time, what medication is given, the reason or a comment, and then there's also in this section, there's a section for bowels, which is another uh, section. But writing that information down is very important. We also recognize that um, this can be a very stressful, chaotic time. This doesn't have to be perfect, it won't be perfect. Uh, oftentimes, I will go into a home and I will fill the medication that is needed and sometimes with the pill uh, in it or sometimes not, depending what the medication is. And I will fill, let's say I have five here. And I know that they're probably not gonna use more than that in the 24 hours that I'm seeing the next day. I just ask to use the medication, put it back. When I come, I know how much you've used. It's not optimal, but it works when that's all that you can do. And 
that's what's really important. We can only do what we can do. I think we've covered the, the, the whole subject. Yes. And we hope that you do so much better managing your medications for your comfort, your loved one's comfort, and we hope you have your, a team that will also support you in that process. Yeah, trust yourself. We're trying to give you the tools so you can do that. Good luck. Thank you.